I had been Charlotte's secretary for nine years, working diligently and faithfully. Just when I was about to be promoted to vice president, she brought in her first love to replace me. She said he had a better education and was more capable than me. I looked at the woman I had loved for ten years and was at a loss for words. Chapter 1 As soon as I walked into the office, everyone greeted me with smiles. Congratulations. Congratulations. From now on, we can't call you Secretary Law anymore. You'll be Vice President Law. The one who waited for ten years has finally made it. Vice President Law. You'll have to take care of us from now on. Vice President Law. You should treat us to dinner tonight to celebrate. After all, we'll be working under you from now on. I looked at my colleagues' smiling faces and smiled back, saying, It's not decided yet. It's too early to say such things. Oh, come on. It's already decided. It's just a matter of going through the formalities. Vice President Law. You're just too modest. I waved my hand with a smile and walked towards the conference room. My colleagues weren't just flattering me. I had been with New Oriental for ten years. Ever since Charlotte started the company in her sophomore year of college, though my title was secretary, I not only had to handle proposals, negotiations, and company development strategies, but also take care of her daily needs. You could say that without me, there would be no New Oriental, and Charlotte wouldn't be where she is today. This position of vice president was something I deserved. Suppressing the excitement in my heart, I walked into the conference room. The senior executives were already seated, but the atmosphere was completely different from outside. The room was eerily silent, and as I entered, I saw the concealed frustration and pity on the faces of the colleagues I had fought alongside for years. I paused, and looked at Charlotte, who was sitting at the head of the table. Her slender fingers were interlocked on the table, and sitting beside her was a handsome man in a sharp suit. The two were sitting very close, their postures intimate. In that instant, my heart felt like it had plunged into ice water, but I still held onto a sliver of hope and asked quietly, Charlotte, who is this? Charlotte avoided my gaze and replied lightly, this is Kevin, our company's new vice president. In a bit, you'll take him to HR to finalize the paperwork. As for his office space, let's put him next to mine. I stood there, feeling as if someone had slapped me in front of everyone, and the world spun around me. The department manager couldn't hold back anymore and slammed the table as he stood up. Charlotte, what's the meaning of this? Didn't we agree that the vice president position was going to Edward? Exactly. The HR manager frowned. We all know how much Edward has contributed over the years. You can't just replace him like this. It's not right. These were colleagues I had worked with for years, and we had always gotten along well. Charlotte's face darkened, and her eyes swept across the room. After a moment, she spoke with a hint of anger in her voice. Am I the president, or are you? The department manager didn't back down. You're the president but the company doesn't belong to you alone. You can't just bring someone in and give them the vice president position. How is that fair? Charlotte sneered. Kevin has a master's degree in finance and economics from Columbia. He's better educated than Edward, and he's more capable. I'm doing this for the good of the company. You're all thinking with your emotions, but a company can't be run on sentiment. I looked at Kevin's familiar face and let out a cold laugh. Charlotte, stop lying. All this talk is just because he's your first love, isn't it? Charlotte and I had known each other since high school. Others might not know, but I had a deep impression of Kevin. He was Charlotte's first love. Back then, they had an intense relationship, but they broke up because Charlotte wanted to stay in China to start her business while Kevin wanted to study abroad. Over the years, men had come and gone in Charlotte's life, but none of them had lasted as long as Kevin. Having been so bluntly exposed, Charlotte's expression became a bit awkward. She leaned back in her large leather chair and looked at me with contempt. Yes. Kevin is my first love, but where am I wrong? His education is better than yours, and he's more capable. Edward, you just have to accept reality. Chapter 2 The meeting ended on a sour note, with me storming out, to replace me at my promotion meeting without any prior notice, I had no idea why Charlotte had to treat me like this. She could have told me in advance, but instead, she chose the most humiliating way possible. Duncan, the department manager, was someone I personally recruited. We had worked together for seven years and he was furious. He came over to my desk, sarcastically complaining. I heard that Kevin caused some trouble abroad, got fired, and his reputation was ruined. He couldn't find a job, so he came crawling back here. Did you see her behavior? She doesn't care about any of us now, only fawning over her little lover. It's disgusting. Seriously, I didn't say anything. Staring blankly at my desk, it was old, worn from years of use, with scratches along the edges. After nine years at the company, I still didn't have my own office. Back then, Charlotte said space was tight, and since I was always running to her office anyway, giving me a separate office didn't make sense, it would be better to allocate it to someone else, I naively agreed, but now, Kevin got his own office the moment he arrived, complete with luxurious mahogany furniture and the most expensive high-end Mac, I finally understood, 
Everything else had just been an excuse. The truth was, Charlotte didn't think I was worth it. Why don't you just quit? Duncan suggested after taking a sip of water. We'll all leave with you. This company is doomed anyway. I was silent for a moment before softly replying. Can you really let go? He froze, falling silent. We had been fighting side by side since the company's early days. To us, this was more than just a job. New Oriental was like a child I had raised with my own hands. I couldn't let it go. My colleagues were even more upset than I was about Kevin's appointment as vice president, especially the senior management. We had worked together for so long, and without any major conflicts of interest, our bonds had grown strong over the years. They couldn't directly oppose Charlotte, but behind the scenes, they expressed their dissatisfaction. Kevin's work didn't go smoothly at all. Duncan, who was supposed to coordinate with him, refused to give him any important clients, only passing him trivial or particularly difficult ones. The other departments were just as uncooperative, handing over documents as if squeezing toothpaste, only when Kevin explicitly asked for them. Charlotte angrily confronted them, only to hear, I didn't know what he needed, but I gave him everything he asked for, didn't I? With no better options, Charlotte turned her attention to me. She called me into her office and said tactfully, You've worked hard over the years. Even though you're called a secretary, you've had to do everything. I looked at her, expressionless. Just say what you want. Charlotte was clearly irritated by my bluntness but held her temper. Now that Kevin's here, you won't have to be so busy anymore. You can hand over all your clients to him and focus on being a secretary. She said it lightly, as if it were nothing important. I couldn't believe it. What did you just say? The clients I handled were long-standing ones I had worked hard for years to secure. She knew exactly what sacrifices I had made to win them over. Back when the company was just starting, we had no resources and had to snatch clients from larger companies. It was incredibly difficult. I still remember when we had just graduated, and a 50-something, pot-bellied client took us to a karaoke bar, pointing at a row of drinks and flashing a yellow-toothed grin at Charlotte. If you drink a glass, I'll sign a million-dollar contract. Don't say I'm not generous, this drink's worth it. Right. Charlotte, proud as ever, couldn't stand the insult and angrily dragged me away, but I knew that if we didn't land this deal, our company's cash flow would collapse, all our hard work would go to waste, I gave her a reassuring smile, sat down, and faced the client, brother, she can't hold her liquor, but I'll drink with you, I still remember the burning taste of that whiskey, its caramel color hit a fiery heat that seemed to ignite my insides as it traveled down to my stomach, I couldn't handle alcohol, but I downed eight glasses that night, I ended up in the bathroom, vomiting so violently it felt like my organs were being torn apart, my face streaked with tears, but I still clung to that client, making him sign the contract on the spot, impressed by my persistence, he gave me a thumbs up, brother, you're tough, I've never seen anything like it, right then and there, he signed a 10 million dollar deal with New Oriental, after he signed the last word, I passed out and ended up in the hospital that night, they pumped my stomach, and I spent the whole night on the brink of death, when I opened my eyes at dawn, Charlotte was sitting by my bedside, her eyes red from crying. I gave her a weak smile. Why are you crying? Our baby is safe now. At that time, she used to call New Oriental our baby. I used to feel embarrassed, but secretly, I was happy every time she used that term. It made me feel like we shared something special. I loved Charlotte, and I knew she knew that too. Back then, she wasn't as composed as she is now. She choked on her words. Why did you do that? So what if we didn't get it? You almost, you almost. She couldn't finish. Her head dropped, her body trembling and she whimpered, don't scare me like that ever again, to me, it had been worth it, because of that incident, I developed chronic stomach problems that persist to this day, after that, similar situations happened several more times, Charlotte was too young and proud back then, and I always had to step in front of her, I loved her, and I was willing to do whatever it took to protect her and our company, I was so foolish back then, thinking it was a blessing to suffer for her, but the same Charlotte, who once swore she wouldn't let me down, was now pushing me out of the company's inner circle, my voice trembled. Charlotte, you know how much I've sacrificed for this company. Why are you doing this to me? Charlotte frowned, irritated. I know you've sacrificed a lot for the company, but who hasn't? Is there any point in constantly bringing it up? Kevin's new here, and he's still learning the ropes. Just hand over your clients to him. You're a secretary. After all, what do you need clients for? No way, I said coldly. Charlotte looked taken aback, as if she hadn't expected me to refuse. If I were you, I wouldn't make things so difficult for myself. Kevin entered the room. He walked over to Charlotte's side, sneering at me. Don't think just because you've been here longer that you can forget your place. This company belongs to Charlotte. Without her, you're nothing. He narrowed his eyes and added sarcastically. If you're smart enough to cooperate, you can keep your job. Otherwise, I'll fire you, and you'll have to pack your bags and leave. I didn't respond. I just looked at Charlotte and asked softly. 
Is this how you feel too? Charlotte's face remained unchanged as she said. Kevin is the vice president of the company. He has the authority to decide personnel matters. After a long pause, I nodded and said calmly, got it. I tore off my employee badge and tossed it onto Charlotte's desk. You don't have to fire me. To hell with it. I quit. Chapter 3. As soon as I stepped outside, I saw a few people eavesdropping near the door. Duncan was furious. How could he be so shameless? I'm done too. I'm leaving with you. The others looked devastated. Law. You built New Oriental from the ground up. What will we do if you leave? We can't really work under that guy who got in through the back door. Can we? I forced a smile and patted Duncan on the shoulder. Let it go. You still have loans to pay off. I'll go ahead for now. But once I'm doing well, I'll bring you over. On the day I left New Oriental, it snowed. I held my things and looked back. The building was shrouded in falling snow, glowing brightly amidst the gloom. I don't know if it was the snowflakes getting in my eyes, but suddenly, my vision blurred. This was the place I had worked for nine years. I had watched it grow from our dorm room, then to a small rental near the school, then a two-floor storefront, and finally, a high-rise office in the city center. I still remember the day we first moved in, sitting on the empty floor, crying and laughing as we celebrated the bright future ahead. I was willing to sacrifice everything to protect it, but now, in just a few short years, I had to say goodbye. After I left, I heard that Kevin tried to assert his authority by holding a meeting, warning everyone that if they didn't cooperate with him, they would end up like me, packing up and leaving. Duncan, without giving him any face, mocked him on the spot, what kind of end? being hired with a high salary as vice president by a bigger company. Kevin's face turned green, and the meeting fell apart. He was an idiot. Someone like me, a versatile talent, was always highly sought after. Even back when New Oriental was still small, many big companies tried to poach me, offering salaries starting at a million a year, but I turned them all down, putting my heart and soul into Charlotte and New Oriental, working for mere thousands a month, yet finding contentment in her presence. But now, I didn't need to hold back anymore. The day after I resigned, I called Victoria, the CEO of New Oriental's biggest rival, New World Group. I heard you're short of people. Do you think I'm up for the job? Victoria didn't hesitate. What I lack is a vice president. If you join, you can start tomorrow. She didn't make empty promises. The very next day, she personally escorted me through the paperwork and introduced me to all the departments. Edward is now New World's vice president. His words carry the same weight as mine. Over the next few days, report your work to him and be sure to cooperate with him fully. That evening, Victoria threw a welcome party for me. I raised my glass to her and said, President Liu, it's an honor to work with everyone at New World. I look forward to a successful partnership. Victoria smiled charmingly, her eyes sparkling with mischief. No, the honor is all New World's for having you, Mr. Law. The work environment was much better than I had anticipated, and I finally had my own spacious office. No one at New World gave me trouble for coming from New Oriental. In fact, I had a decent reputation in the industry, and they were already aware of my abilities. Everything was going smoothly, even beyond my expectations, until I received my first major project. When I opened the file, I was stunned. It was the same marketing collaboration with a listed company that I had been working on back at New Oriental. The deal was substantial and crucial for several companies in the city. Charlotte hadn't trusted anyone else with it and had personally assigned me to oversee it. I had spent half a month working on the proposal until I was satisfied with it. Given how much Charlotte valued Kevin, this project must have been handed over to him by now. A fire ignited in my heart. This was my first major project after leaving New Oriental, and my chance to prove myself. This time, I was going to show them exactly what New Oriental had become without me. Chapter 4 On the day of the negotiation, Victoria took me along. Before we even entered, we ran into Charlotte, who had arrived at the same time, with Kevin following closely behind. When he saw me, he frowned slightly. Charlotte's expression was complicated. She looked at me, her lips moving as if she wanted to say something. I walked past her without sparing her a glance. Once the meeting began, we sat across from each other. As I looked at Charlotte, a flood of mixed emotions filled my heart. This was the first time I wasn't sitting by her side, and I never expected to be sitting across from her. Fate sure has a twisted sense of humor. The project lead adjusted his glasses and said, This project is very important to us and we appreciate you all being here. Why don't we start by having each of you present your proposals, and we'll make a decision after that. Kevin eagerly stood up, picked up the proposal, and began his presentation. New Oriental has a strong advantage in precision marketing. You can see here our previous successful cases, including the campaign we did for Jamie Catering. In just six months, their market share, ad spend, and sales all significantly increased, along with several other. I kept a blank expression as I listened. These were all cases I had worked on and it was shameless of him to present them as his own. But as he went on, 
Something didn't feel right. The content of New Oriental's proposal sounded more and more familiar. This was the proposal I had written before I left. A surge of anger rose in my chest as I turned my gaze toward Charlotte. I couldn't believe she could be this shameless. Giving Kevin the proposal I had painstakingly worked on for so long. I had given that proposal to Duncan before I left. But Charlotte must have snatched it for Kevin. I didn't know if I felt more angry or heartbroken. I had been Charlotte's secretary for nine years. Working diligently and faithfully. Even if she didn't like me. At the very least. We were once friends. How could she stoop so low? Charlotte seemed to feel guilty and didn't dare meet my gaze. In that moment. I was utterly disappointed in her. Kevin finished his presentation. And I noticed a look of satisfaction on the project lead's face as he praised. New Oriental never fails to impress. This is an excellent proposal. Mr. Lou. Kevin shamelessly accepted the compliment. Thank you. Now. Let's hear from New World. Victoria nodded at me. And I took my proposal to the front. This proposal had been put together in a rush. And I couldn't say it was better than the one Kevin had. After hearing me out. The project lead simply nodded. Well then. Wait. I interrupted. I have a question for Mr. Kevin. Just now. You mentioned that New Oriental has 18 marketing branches in S-City. But as far as I know. New Oriental actually only has 8. So. Where did the other 10 come from? This was a mistake I had made when I originally wrote the proposal. Accidentally inputting the wrong number. But after I left. No one had corrected it. Kevin froze. Flipping through the proposal in panic under the project lead's scrutinizing gaze. The more flustered he became. The harder it was for him to find the data. After all. This wasn't his work. He was just parroting what was written. I let out a cold laugh. Can't you remember the data from your own proposal? Or are you deliberately exaggerating to deceive us into this project? I pressed him harder. Is this how you approach collaboration, with such irresponsibility? How can the client trust you? Kevin was thoroughly rattled. He gritted his teeth and glared at me. It's you. You did this on purpose. I shrugged and replied innocently. This is New Oriental's proposal. What does it have to do with me? The project lead frowned. Falsifying data was a serious issue in the business world. He spoke sternly. Mr. Lou. What exactly is going on here? Kevin stammered. Unable to explain. Charlotte quickly tried to smooth things over. Sorry. Mr. Zhang. It was a mistake made by our intern. The correct number is 8. Our reputation at New Oriental has always been reliable. Please take a look at our previous case studies. Before she could finish, I interrupted coldly. All those previous cases were done by me. What do they have to do with you? Jingy Foods. Tea Products. Aurora Women's Wear. Every single one of those marketing campaigns was designed by me. Edward. How dare you claim them as your own? Victoria smiled at the perfect moment and added. Mr. Zhang. I forgot to mention. Our company's vice president, Mr. Edward, was previously employed by New Oriental. All of the successful campaigns you've seen were his handiwork. If you choose to work with New World, Mr. Law will personally oversee the marketing for this project. As we left the building, Charlotte's face was as dark as coal. The project lead directly rejected New Oriental's proposal and signed with us. We are extremely disappointed with New Oriental. Mr. Zhang didn't mince words, coldly stating. You've been too irresponsible. You don't even know how many branches you have. We won't be considering any future collaborations with New Oriental. This project would determine which company could dominate the S-City market. And it was crucial for both companies. Charlotte had put a lot of effort into this project. And the failure would hit her hard. When we left, she looked at me. Her tone filled with reproach. Edward, you didn't hold back at all. I raised an eyebrow. Business is war. Surely, President Jean isn't still thinking about showing mercy. She clenched her fists and frowned at me. So, a vice president position was enough for you to sell out our relationship. You're really pragmatic. I stared at Charlotte, realizing that she was genuinely upset and thought I had done something wrong. I found it incredibly absurd. I was so angry that I actually laughed. A smirk spread across my face. Charlotte, it's fine to be useless, but being both useless and shameless is a problem. When I was around, you relied on me. You leaned on me while trying to suppress me. And then you bring in some. I glanced disdainfully at Kevin incompetent fool to take my place as vice president. And now you want to call me pragmatic. You disgust me. I wiped the smile off my face and enunciated each word slowly. Charlotte's face turned pale, and she opened her mouth but couldn't say anything. She looked at me in disbelief, as if she couldn't comprehend how the men who had always stood by her side could suddenly turn against her. I didn't look back at her again and walked away. From the day she let Kevin push me out of New Oriental, my last shred of feeling for her had been completely wiped away. These past 10 years have been nothing but a dream. Now that I've woken up, it's time to move on with my life. Chapter 5 A while later, Duncan called me, complaining, I'm really at my wit's end with Kevin. Wasn't he supposed to be some Columbia graduate? A top student? Why does he seem like an idiot to me? He put together a proposal full of holes. 
and the numbers don't even add up. He didn't let us review it, like he was scared we'd steal it. The client saw the proposal and was furious, refusing to sign the contract. I spent nearly six months working on that deal, and this guy ruined it. He's such a jinx. Duncan took a sip of water and continued, you have no idea. In the last few months, he's offended almost all of our clients. The company's performance has dropped by more than 40%. After hanging up, I sat in silence, to be honest. I saw this coming from the moment I left. Over the years, I had done everything for Charlotte. I'm the type who, when I care for someone, I give my all, to the point where I'd practically carve out my heart for them. I gave everything I had, but now, I finally understood that things that come too easily are never cherished. I had protected Charlotte too well. Four years, all the projects she handled were ones I carefully prepared and perfected. Her success had always been backed by my support. Without me, she was nothing. I wanted to move on, to never look back. But in S-City, there were only a few big companies, and we often had to cross paths. In late October, Victoria brought back a project. This company is from Beijing. They're pretty big, and they're looking to launch a marketing campaign. Take a look. After researching it for a while, I said seriously, we can't take on this project. Look, the company is quite large, and their budget is high. If their information and products are fine, why wouldn't they promote in Beijing? Why come all the way here? To put it bluntly, our market here isn't on the same level as Beijing's. You should investigate their products. I suspect something's wrong. A few days later, Victoria returned with a serious expression. You were right. I had someone look into it. Their previous products had issues. And this company is just a shell trying to clear out substandard stock. If it weren't for your vigilance, we would have been screwed. I thought the matter had passed, but when I ran into Charlotte again at an industry association meeting, I found out that they had taken the project. Kevin, standing next to Charlotte, sneered at me, Edward, do you really think New Oriental can't survive without you? We just landed a huge project, much bigger than anything you've ever done. You were just lucky before, riding on New Oriental's coattails. Don't think the world stops turning without you. I looked at Charlotte, hesitating to speak, out of spite, I didn't want to tell her the truth about the project. But New Oriental was a company I had built from the ground up, and I couldn't stand the thought of it falling apart. Charlotte misunderstood my silence, and she looked at me intently. Edward, I can live just fine without you. I don't need you. I swallowed the words I wanted to say and chuckled softly. Is that so? Well, that's great, then. Over the next few days, Charlotte and Kevin were visibly riding high. This was the first major project they had completed since I left, and they were eager to flaunt it. All of New Oriental's marketing teams were working overtime to promote the product, pushing it hard, but the higher you climb, the harder you fall when judgment day comes. One chilly autumn evening, the first post exposing the product hit the internet. In their marketing campaign, they had started promoting a baby formula. However, many infants who consumed the formula began experiencing severe vomiting and diarrhea, ending up in the hospital. At first, Charlotte and her team managed to suppress the posts by throwing money at the problem, but as more and more posts surfaced, Things quickly spiraled out of control. The situation reached a breaking point in November when two toddlers, just over a year old, suffered respiratory failure after drinking the formula. Both died shortly after being rushed to the hospital. It was like a hornet's nest had been kicked, chaos erupted, people were outraged. Every news outlet and website reported on the tragedy, and the company's shady practices were fully exposed. New Oriental, which had promoted the product, got caught in the crossfire and was thoroughly scrutinized. Promoting such a heartless product, doesn't the boss worry about earning money but not living long enough to spend it? How could a product like this get promoted? There must be some shady dealings. This needs a thorough investigation. This kind of corrupt company needs to be shut down. In no time, New Oriental became the target of public outrage. Most of the clients Kevin had alienated during his tenure had already left, with some of them following me to New World. The few that remained quickly terminated their contracts after this scandal, unwilling to risk further association. Charlotte was in a complete panic, begging anyone she could for help, but to no avail. Just when I thought New Oriental was about to learn a harsh lesson, Duncan suddenly came to me. In just a few days, he looked much more worn out, with dark circles so deep I feared he might collapse on the spot. I was taken aback. It can't be that bad, can it? Is the situation really that serious? Duncan rubbed his face but said nothing. After a long silence, he buried his head in his hands, his voice filled with mixed emotions. Edward. New Oriental is finished, I frowned. Once the storm passes, it should be fine. The main blame falls on the production company. After all, Duncan let out a bitter laugh. It's not just this. You don't know, New Oriental's been a mess these past few days. After the incident, that idiot Kevin, in his desperation, went to an old acquaintance for advice. The guy asked him to bring out the company's files so they could better diagnose the problem. Isn't that leaking trade secrets? I was shocked. Exactly. 
Duncan sighed, rubbing his forehead in exhaustion. Kevin was too dumb to realize. He actually handed over the files. Turns out, the guy wasn't trying to help. He was trying to take us down. Now, all of New Oriental's proposals have been leaked, including the ones we were working on for clients. We're being sued, and there's not nearly enough money in the accounts to cover the damages. This time, New Oriental might really be done for. We spent years building it up, and it's about to collapse so quickly. I said nothing. Honestly, I didn't know what to say. I had poured nearly 10 years of my life into New Oriental. Seeing it fall apart like this left me feeling conflicted. Why did Charlotte have to bring back such an incompetent person to be vice president? Duncan looked baffled. I thought she liked Kevin, but they don't seem to be together. Last time, Kevin asked her out for dinner, and she didn't even go. I don't know. I shook my head. I would never understand what Charlotte was thinking. And now, there was no need to. As we were eating, Duncan suddenly got a video call. When he answered, chaos erupted on the other end, with people shouting so loudly that we could barely hear them. What's going on? Duncan was confused. What's all this noise? Manager Law. The new intern sounded like they were about to cry. The police came to take Vice President Kevin. They said he leaked trade secrets and is being sued. The whole company's in chaos. Please come back. I looked at the screen, seeing New Oriental's office packed with angry clients, some of whom I recognized. They were all shouting at Kevin, spitting venomous words, we entrusted you with our product details for marketing under a confidentiality agreement. And now this. What's the meaning of this? Yeah. Us too. You promised there would be no leaks. Where's Secretary Law? Nothing like this ever happened when Law was here. The moment you showed up, our product details were leaked everywhere. What's wrong with you people at New Oriental? Kevin's face was ashen. Panicking. He stammered. I didn't know. I didn't know he was a scammer. How can you blame me? You should be going after him. He kept repeating those same two sentences like a broken record, but the clients were quickly losing patience. Don't give us that crap. We gave the information to you, not him. Why would we go after him? You can explain it to the police. Let's see how well that excuse holds up. With that, the clients started dragging him away. Kevin, terrified, reached out to Charlotte. Charlotte, save me. I did all of this for you, for the company. Buffed. The HR manager sneered. Shameless. You've nearly run this company into the ground, and now you want us to save you. Our small temple can't handle a god like you. Get lost already. Kevin looked around in desperation, only to find that everyone was staring coldly at him. The once thriving company was now in shambles, and everyone was on the verge of losing their jobs. Who could still look kindly upon him? Charlotte, he begged, his voice trembling, but Charlotte merely glanced at him, her eyes filled with disgust. Kevin froze for a moment before being dragged away. Chapter 6 I didn't have to go out of my way to find out what happened next. The news spread quickly throughout the companies in the city. Every business took New Oriental's downfall as a lesson, launching internal reviews and confidentiality training to prevent a similar disaster. In the end, New Oriental couldn't be saved. The compensation was too much, and the company's finances couldn't hold up. Even after Charlotte poured her own money into the company, it was impossible to turn the tide. Eventually, New Oriental was sold off at a rock-bottom price. Everything Charlotte had painstakingly built over the years was finally gone. Kevin was sentenced to three years in prison for leaking trade secrets. Before going in, I heard he was still shouting that it wasn't his fault. But no one paid attention to him. Not even Charlotte visited him again. I took a day off from work, unsure of what I was doing, and just wandered down the streets aimlessly. Before I realized it, I found myself standing in front of New Oriental's now dark and empty building. The sign had been removed, leaving the facade bare. The lights were still on inside but it felt hollow without the new Oriental logo. I didn't even know how, but I had ended up here again. It was a cold, gray winter evening. The wind howled, biting into my skin, and the sky loomed dark and heavy above. It was the same kind of weather as the day I left New Oriental, but now, there were no bright lights to greet me. I stood at the edge of the street, hands in my pockets, staring at the building until my eyes began to ache. From the age of 20 to 29, I had poured my entire youth into this company. I watched it grow. From a joke shared among a few college students into a billion-dollar enterprise, it had once been my dream, something I believed in, something I was willing to dedicate my entire life to. I never thought I would witness its collapse so soon. I blew warm air onto my freezing hands and ducked into a small wonton shop nearby. The shop was tiny and tucked away in a quiet corner of the street. Few knew about it, and most of the customers were regulars. The owner recognized me and wiped down a table, greeting me with a warm smile, long time no see. You've been busy with work lately. I opened my mouth to reply, but only managed. Yeah, really busy. Still want the mild spice. I nodded and sat down at one of the greasy, worn tables. No matter how much they tried to clean, they could never seem to get the table spotless. But the food here was always fantastic. 
In the early years, when Charlotte and I were just starting out and money was tight, we used to come here. We'd order a few skewers and share a couple of beers. She couldn't hold her liquor, and after one bottle, her face would turn red, and she'd start talking nonsense. When we ring the bell on Nasdaq, we'll do it together. I laughed at her back then. Ringing the bell, you're more like the bell yourself. We don't even have any clients yet. She would just laugh, her eyes shimmering in the dim light from the cheap incandescent bulb. Once we ring the bell, we'll. The shop was too noisy, and her voice was too soft. I couldn't catch the rest, we'll do what? But she didn't finish, she just smiled. It hadn't even been that many years. Now, I sat alone in the same spot, drinking beer, my heart heavy with a mix of bitterness and sorrow. How had things ended up like this? The door curtain rustled as someone came in, bringing with them a gust of cold wind. The person sat across from me. The shop owner chuckled. You two used to always come together. Then you started coming in alone. I thought you'd broken up. But here you are again. That's nice. Charlotte didn't correct him. Boss, bring us a case of beer. Right away. She sat down as if nothing had happened. Picking up the beer I had placed on the table and taking a sip. The icy liquid, full of carbonation, made her frown tightly. I couldn't resist a jab. What's wrong? President Jean had too much fine liquor to handle plain beer now. Charlotte didn't answer. After a long silence, she lowered her head and spoke softly. Edward, do you think I'm useless? That I'm a complete failure? I let out a cold laugh. Is that even a question? She forced a bitter smile. New Oriental is gone. I couldn't save it. I sold it. I know. I always thought that even without you, I could make it. Her voice was quiet, filled with a sadness I had never heard before. I thought I didn't need your protection anymore. I took a sip of my beer, trying to swallow down the bitterness in my heart. I had ordered quite a few skewers, but Charlotte didn't touch any of them. She just kept drinking. She was always a lightweight, and she was drinking fast. Soon, her eyes were clouded with drunkenness. For a moment, in her tired face, with her perfect makeup slightly smudged, I saw a glimpse of the young Charlotte who used to wear a simple white t-shirt, always talking about taking the company public. That Charlotte had long disappeared. Now, this Charlotte was far from ringing any bells. She was more likely to bury me at this point. I could only see the faint shadow of the person she used to be, brought out by the alcohol. Edward, do you know why I brought Kevin back to be vice president? I thought for a moment. You felt threatened by me, didn't you? It was something I had figured out later. We were both adults. No one still believed in those fairy tales about first love or unforgettable romances. Even if she did have feelings for Kevin, she wouldn't have jeopardized the company over something like that. She must have thought that my influence in the company had grown too strong, threatening her position as CEO. That's why she pushed me out. In the adult world, it's always about self-interest, isn't it? Charlotte laughed, but it was more painful than crying. No, it wasn't that. I just wanted to prove to you that I, Charlotte, could stand on my own without your protection. Do you remember the time you were forced to drink? How could I forget? Even now, my stomach still hurts late at night. You couldn't drink back then either. She gazed at me, though it seemed like she was looking far into the past. When they wheeled you into the emergency room, the doctor gave me a critical condition notice. You don't know how scared I was. I thought, I don't need the company. I don't need to be an entrepreneur. I just want you to be okay. I didn't know if it was the bitterness of the beer or something else, but her words made me feel like I was on the verge of tears. Charlotte downed the beer in her hand and crushed the can with trembling fingers. Her eyes were red. Back then, I felt so useless, needing you to protect me like that. I lowered my voice. I did it willingly. I liked you back then. I just wanted you to be okay. I couldn't stand seeing you suffer. And do you think I could stand it? She suddenly retorted. All these years, I never responded to you. Not because I didn't like you, but because she lowered her head, her voice laced with pain. I didn't feel worthy. I didn't think I had the ability to stand by your side. How could I say I loved you? I kept pushing myself, thinking that one day I'd be able to lighten your load, to help you. She choked up, her voice breaking. I just didn't want you to have to shield me anymore. She was almost 30 now, wearing an expensive Chanel suit, yet sitting in a roadside food stall, sobbing uncontrollably. I took another sip of beer, feeling the cold liquid spread warmth through my stomach. After a while, I spoke. Don't make it sound so noble. You might have had a bit of that in mind. But wasn't your ambition the real driving force? Charlotte. I know you too well. You're too proud of a woman. You couldn't stand being outshone by me. Always standing in my shadow. That's why you pushed me out. Even if it wasn't Kevin, it would have been someone else. There was no place for me in New Oriental anymore. Charlotte fell silent. Not saying another word. I finished my last bottle of beer and stood up. Boss. She's paying. The owner smiled. Got it. I picked up my coat and lifted the curtain at the door. Outside. It had started snowing. Large flakes danced in the wind. Glowing softly under the streetlight's warm yellow light behind me. Charlotte called out to me, her voice trembling. Edward, 
If I said I knew I was wrong, would you come back? I didn't answer. I let the curtain fall behind me and walked into the snowstorm. Chapter 7 In late January, just as I was preparing to resign, Duncan called me. His voice was tired and carried an inexplicable weight. Charlotte was in a car accident. Is it serious? I gripped the cup in my hand tightly. Duncan was silent for a long time before he quietly said. She's lost a leg. They had to amputate. Her fingers were severed too, although they reattached them. The doctor said she'll likely only be able to perform light activities in the future. She won't be able to carry anything heavy. My mind went blank. And I asked, dazed. How did this happen? She went out drinking. Then drove on the highway. She was drunk and crashed. Duncan said somberly. New Oriental is gone. She's probably the one taking it the hardest. If you have time, maybe you should go see her. After hanging up the phone, I still couldn't believe it. I sat at my desk for the rest of the afternoon, unable to focus. Every time I closed my eyes, all I could picture was Charlotte's face covered in blood. For someone as proud as her, being disabled for life, how would she ever accept that? But after thinking about it for a long time, I decided not to visit her. Charlotte and I had been in competition for so long. In her current state, she definitely wouldn't want me to see her at her lowest. Our relationship had run its course, from meeting as teenagers to growing tired of each other. It had come to an end. This complicated, fragile bond, full of too many emotions, was shattered before we could even speak about it. Did she ever love me? Perhaps she did, but that love couldn't withstand her pride and stubbornness. It ends here, I thought as I looked out at the sunset, glowing red like blood. It was a mistake from the start, it's time to stop. When I handed in my resignation, Victoria did everything she could to convince me to stay. Is there something wrong with the company's benefits? If there's anything you're unhappy about, let me know. I'll fix it. I smiled and shook my head. The company has treated me well, and so have you, President Liu. I'm just a bit tired. I want to take a break for a while. Victoria sighed regretfully. Then after you've rested, you must come back. New World's doors will always be open for you. In the following months, I traveled everywhere. Chengdu, Hangzhou, Inner Mongolia, Tibet, abroad. I visited the Maldives, Egypt, toured Europe, and even made my way to Antarctica. All of my best years had been spent working. After everything that had happened recently, I suddenly realized that I had never truly enjoyed life. So, I indulged myself, walking barefoot on the fluorescent beaches of foreign lands, galloping across endless grasslands, and losing myself in the vibrant northern lights under Iceland's night sky. Life was more than just work, and now, I finally discovered a new kind of happiness. In the heat of August, Duncan sent me a message on WeChat. Haven't you had enough? You're practically a travel influencer now, making us all jealous with your daily posts. Isn't it time for you to come back and get back to the grind? I laughed and teased. You lost your job, but you're still itching to work like a wage slave. You're incorrigible. Duncan chuckled. Damn right. So, when are you coming back? The guys are all waiting to start over with you. I glanced down at the suitcase in my hand and smiled slightly. Clean yourself up and wait. I've just landed. This time, I'm definitely taking you guys to ring the bell on Nasdaq. In the distance, the sun began to rise, its rays filling the sky with a golden light. 